this video, we are going to take a look at how to find arc length. To find the arc length, we essentially need to know the distance formula and the limit as those changes in x and changes in y become smaller and smaller. And so I'm not going to go through the um, method in which these formulas came from. Um, you can certainly look in your book or Google it to find that, um, that walkthrough. Uh, for me, it's sufficient just to give you the formula. And the formula essentially tells us that if we're trying to find the length of the arc over the interval from A to B, then those are going to be our limits of integration. And we're going to take the square root, which obviously comes from the distance formula, of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Now, same thing if we're going in the opposite direction. If our function is in terms of y, then we're using cd, but everything else is the same. So let's take a look at our first example. But before we actually use the formula that I've already written for you at the top of the screen, let's just keep in mind what we're doing. We're trying to find the distance. Now, up to this point, the only way we knew to find the distance was if we had a nice straight line segment like this one that I drew in from 0, 0 to 9, comma 60, which is a, a decent approximation of the length of our arc. And notice when I do that, I'm using just the distance formula that we've you know, used 100 times and finding that it's about 60.67. So now what I want is to find the actual length of the arc, which of course is the arc that I've drawn in in red on our graph. And if you'll notice, what I need to find to be able to compute that is a and b, the limits of integration, and then f prime of x and square it. So this is pretty easy for a, b. It's given to me in the question. So up to this point, I have 0 to 9, and then I have 1 plus, and now I have to do some work. So different students and different teachers have different ways of going about this. So sometimes you'll see this extra separate section of work where the student is finding the 1 um, f prime of x squared and doing all of that work here and then just taking that final solution and plugging it in and that's fine as long as I can read your work that's cool. I tend to take uh, just the f prime of x and square it and then plug that back in so that's the way I'm going to do it but you know you do you and I'll do me. So uh, let's find f prime of x and square it. So what is f of x? Well here is f of x, 2, x to the 3 halves plus 3. Now, we've been doing antiderivatives, integrating for quite some time. Basically, ever since we started this class, we have barely done any derivatives at all. So it might um, take you a minute to get used to finding the derivative again instead of the antiderivative. But remember, I would take, uh, let's see what color I was using, white. So I would take the exponent 3 halves and multiply it by 2, which would give me 3x, and then I would reduce the power of 3 halves by 1, giving me 1 half. So that's the derivative, and again, I'm going to go ahead and square it. So some people don't square it yet. They will uh, plug it back in here and say 1 plus 3x to the 1 half squared. I'm going to go ahead and square it, which is going to give me 3 squared, which is 9, and x to the 1 half squared, which is just x to the 2 halves, or x. So I'm going to replace that with 9x dx. And again, it does. there's no right way. As long as I can follow your work and I see exactly what you're doing, uh, I'm totally fine with it. So here's what I have now is I have... Um, the integral from 0 to 9 of the square root of 1 plus 9x dx. From here, now obviously I need to integrate. Um, but I can't really do that yet because it's hard to integrate when I've got this, you know, square root function. So again, we have to do, you know, 8-track flashback to what did we do in 
calculus one when we figured this out. So we're going to do some u sub, and we're going to say u is 1 plus 9x, which means du over dx is the derivative of 1 plus 9x, which is just 9. And of course, we would write that as du equals 9 dx. So you don't have to show this intermediate step. I was just reminding you what we did before. So now I have s equals, and I'm going to do some u substitution. So this is actually the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. And I need du, which is 9 dx. So I have dx, and I need to multiply by 9, which means I need a 1 ninth on the outside. And then now I have du, because I have 9 dx, which is du. Now here's the other problem. The other problem is I've now changed from dx to du, so my limits of integration are no longer 0 to 9. Now I have to use um, that u function to find the new limits of integration. So if u is equal to 1 plus 9x, then I need to find u of 0, which is 1 plus 9 times 0, or 1, and u of 9, which is 1 plus 9 times 9, 1 plus 81, which is 82. So now this is from 1, oops, I wrote, I said 82, but I wrote 81. Do you hate it when you do that? So now I have 1 to 82. And this is just in the way, I'm sorry, I thought I put it far enough down, but I didn't. Uh, that is a very important part of your work, so make sure that's shown on your screen. I had to get rid of it for the sake of room. So from here, obviously, I am going to integrate, and I have the 1 ninth on the outside, and then u to the 1 half. Now remember, I'm integrating or finding the antiderivative again, so it's u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, or 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 1 to 82. So I'm going to go ahead and just take all of this on the outside, which gives me 2 27ths on the outside. And then I have 82 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves. And this is obviously going to be a big hot mess. Um, it's going to be a decimal. And so it's okay with me for you to get it to this point, because obviously there is no perfect square of 82. That's why it's okay to use a decimal, because you're just going to get a crazy decimal anyway. And so I'm just going to use my calculator to evaluate it from here and get about 54.929. And I should have used the approximately equal to, and again, that's just a length, so it's just units. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. Uh, remember, this part's important. If I'm going to keep it in terms of u, you have to change the limits of integration. If I'm going to change it back to the 1 plus 9x and put it back in terms of x, I don't have to do this step, but I do have to change it back before I do my antiderivative. So let's take a look now at another example. And in this example, we're asked to find the arc length of the graph of y minus 1 cubed, quantity cubed, is equal to x squared over the interval from 0 to 8. Now, I went ahead and graphed this for you, but again, it's not as important to graph um, on these questions because we're not revolving anything. We're just finding the length of a segment or an arc. So just like I did on my last one, I was using that function that said to find the length of the arc, I would integrate from a to b the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And so again, if you'll recall, what I did last time is I went ahead and sort of separated this part out and said, let's go ahead and do that first. Um, and so let's take a look at what that would look like in this question. I have y minus 1 quantity cubed equals x squared. And so in my last question, I already had it in a function form. It was a function of x, and that's not what I have here. So I have to just do some algebraic manipulations. So to get y by itself, I would take the cubed root of each side, so y minus 1, 
is equal to x to the two-thirds, and then y, or f of x, which is what I need, is equal to x to the two-thirds plus one. So, so far so good. Now I need to find the f prime of x and square it. So let's find f prime of x, and when I do that, I would get two-thirds x to the negative one-third, which is like two over three x to the one-third. And here's where I have to stop you, because if you'll recall, we were asked to integrate from zero to eight, and if I plug zero into this function, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to end up with an undefined value. And so it's not okay for me to use this function or this function. So now what? Well, now I can do the exact same thing with respect to y. So from c to d of one plus g prime of x squared dy. Sorry, that's supposed to be g prime of y dy. So everything in terms of y instead of in terms of x. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I've got y minus one cubed equals x squared and I need to get x by itself, so if I take the square root of each side, I get y minus one to the three halves, and actually it's a plus or minus situation, but I only need the plus side, because obviously you can see my graph. So that is my x equals, or my g of y. So now let's find g prime of y and square it. So g prime of y, oops, squared. And then I'll plug that back into my function. So if g of y is y minus one quantity to the three halves, then the derivative is three halves y minus one to the one half. And I need to square that. So if I square that, I get three squared, which is nine, over two squared, which is four. And then y minus one to the one half, remember I'm just multiplying exponents, so that's y minus one to the first, or just y minus one, which gives me nine fourths y minus nine fourths. Now, did I have to distribute? No, why did I? Because I know I'm plugging it in back here, and I'm going to end up doing some uh, com combining with that other constant. So let's continue. I have now just determined that g prime of y squared is equal to 9 fourths y minus 9 fourths. What I haven't yet determined is c and d. I can't use 0, 8. 0, 8 was if I was integrating with respect to x. So now let's look with respect to y. I can see that my y values start at 1 and end at five. So that will be my limits of integration. So now we are in business. Let's get cracking. This is integrating from one to five. I'm going to combine one, which is four fourths, with minus nine fourths to give me the square root of nine fourths y um, minus five fourths dy. And I could go from here, but I just, I don't love fractions when I'm trying to do, you know, all of this. So what I can think about doing, I'm going to try to do this without taking up 18 lines of work. If I think about taking a one-fourth out of everything inside, that gives me 9y minus 5. And now I can actually take the square root of one-fourth out of that because it's a product times the binomial. So the square root of one fourth is one half. So I'm going to write this as one half and then integrating uh, from one to five, the square root of nine y minus five. So that's gonna make it just a little bit easier. Um, so now I have to find the antiderivative. And again, this is dy. So keep in mind, I'm dealing now with the antiderivative of 9y minus 5, and I'm just going to write that to the 1 half. 
So if you'll recall, I'm totally going to run out of room here, but if you'll recall, if I'm going to integrate this, I'm going to need um, three halves, and then all of this, 9y minus 5, divided by, oops, look at me getting confused with derivatives and antiderivatives. I've got 9y minus 5 to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves or times 2 thirds. And the other thing that is an issue here is remember when I'm integrating, I need, this is sort of our u du situation, so if u was 9y minus 5, then du would be 9 dx, or dy, sorry, 9 dy. So I need there to be a 9 here, which means I also have a 1 9th here. So the outside is now 1 18th, and then everything I just wrote integrated from 1 to 5. So we got a lot going on here. So I have 1 18th times 2 9y minus 5 to the 3 halves over 3. Let's take all of the values that are not inside of the binomial there and just combine those together. So I'm going to end up with 1 over 9 times 3, 27, and then 9y minus 5 to the 3 halves, integrating from 1 to 5. That gives me 1 27th, and again, I'm out of room, so I'm just going to wing it a little bit. So I've got 1 27th, and then 40 to the 3 halves, minus 4 to the 3 halves, And so my result is approximately 9.073. So yes, that was a lot of work and kind of a mess, and I tried to fit it all on one page. So hopefully that made sense why we couldn't use the first method and had to use the second. Uh, and we did just a lot of a lot of math on that one. So hopefully that was enough practice for the arc length, let's take a look now at surfaces of revolution.